Hello my friends, today I want to do an extemporaneous rant. I'm still working on my Hussein Chalane and Issey Miyake videos. I also am still working on switching from the bright pink hair. I told you guys I have a head crisis. I had to cover and amend. But today I wanted to talk about the unconventional aspects of dressing that you can emphasize when working to find your personal style that are, in my opinion, left out of a lot of these conversations. So let's kind of get into it. There are no universal necessities for anybody when it comes to shopping or developing personal style, but I do think that um, attaching to larger sensibilities and philosophies over aesthetics or specific items uh, is something that I encourage people to do as it relates to slow fashion and as it relates to actually finding yourself and having fun with personal style. The first thing I wanted to talk about was taking up space. So I actually talked about Scott L. Ruff's spatial wrapping. I'll link the article below and you can read it. But to me, the one aspect of fashion design and getting dressed in our interpersonal lives that I don't really hear talked about a lot is the ability to take up space in fashion. Volume is something that I think the most marginalized people use really really often and it has such an impact visually and resounds culturally um, and so in the spatial wrapping videos that i made on tiktok i talked about how um, in scott l ruff's um, essay he talks about how black people will sometimes wear bigger clothes physically larger clothes pants that are bigger that um, fold up at the ankle, that shoes that are big and make a clip cloppy sound and hit your foot as they come up clip clop, clip clop, clip clop, clip clop because they're too big, uh, bolder, bigger shoelaces, 3XL oversized hoodies, etc. And how that's an, a huge aspect of fashion. And then aside from that, like think about goth fashion and trip pants, think about the um, alternative rave culture, uh, underground cultures, how they'll have like 3XL like leg, like Janko jeans even, like skateboarding pants and skateboarding shorts, etc. Like any alternative subculture or marginalized group that I can think of has a form of clothing in contemporary fashion that signals the value of taking up a lot of space. And I think it comes from being excluded from spaces, being exiled from spaces, being told that you don't deserve space where you are. Like as a person, socially, you, you should not take up space here, which can make you feel like you shrink yourself in general. You shrink your identity, you shrink your personality, you shrink your ability to feel like you belong somewhere. And I think combating that by wearing like larger flared pants, oversized clothes, uh, heavier shoes, physically wider shoes. I think we saw a huge trend on the runway in the last um, season, spring, summer 2023. All of these people had these like wraps around their shoes. J.W. Anderson, the Wave show. All, I can put them all on the screen, but so many shoes had these like wraps around them that it, that it looks like, and the soles were extending beyond the the top of the shoe. I thought it was so interesting, and I, I think it's really, really valuable to consider when you're forming your personal style, how much space do I want to physically take up? Do you want to make yourself a tall column of all one color so that it looks like you're taking up more space? Or do you want to shrink yourself in and cut yourself off by wearing like um, high water pants? Like what do you want to do? What kind of space do you hope to take up and why? What do you hope to gain from taking up that space? Um, I think in Scott L. Ruff's um, essay and if not I, and I, I'll find where I've read about this but they talk about how like in the school hallways it would be really important for our young black boys to have outfits that were bigger and more dynamic because the hallway is so tight and there's people coming by you and you want to be able to assert yourself and assert dominance and status but also like humanity like I'm here it's not even like I'm the coolest I'm the baddest I'm the best it's like I'm physically here and you can't you know discount me and not think about me. I'm saying where I am, but this is something that's seasonless. This is something that transcends season, race, uh, body type, etc., etc. It depends on what your personal perspective is on how much space you want to take up. And I think when you consider that, it'll really help you form your your personal style. So I brought up when I was reading Ingrid Loeschek's When Clothes Become Fashion that taking up space gives fashion depth and reason and a point and allows for uh, an image to almost like visually resound. Um, it like bounces and like reverberates <laughs> over time in a way that like this very 
um, I don't know, I think it's like placid, like boring, transparent fashion doesn't have that same strength. Um, I think we were talking about how Issey Miyake, for example, legendary fashion designer, his design took up a lot of space sometimes, had depth, purpose, and was functional. While conceptual, we were talking about how she framed the uh, Irving Penn shoots where his work like balloons up, Issey Miyake's fashion design balloons up into these like gigantic humps that like float up into the air and take up all this space like an inflatable bubble. She was saying that sometimes that's done in fashion and conceptual art in a way that is just like she said okay let me word it exactly how she did so I'm not misquoting she said her perspective is that blown up figures created in fashion tend not to exist beyond the avant-garde pretension of sculpturalizing. My argument was that Issey Miyake and his successors like Dai Fujiwara, Naoki, etc. Um, I said that they made it more accessible and less elitist. I argue that it feel, makes people feel out of control and not grounded when they're not considering the space that they're taking up and when their clothes lack uh, spatial awareness uh, for their position in society and their status in relationship with others and their relationship with themselves like if you're just putting on clothes to adorn yourself if you don't care about clothes okay but if you're very interested in clothing and styling and you know creating an identity for you yourself why wouldn't you be thinking about how much space you're taking up on your body what space exists between the garments and your body how much space there is um, in between different you know parts of your body it's fun like it doesn't mean that you have to be thinking about this like a serious angry essay like I have to make sure I'm taking up this much space but it it is really cool to think that like teenage black children uh, when they're you know building an identity in relationship with internal status hierarchies in schools will be like I gotta be bigger wearing bigger wider shoes skateboard shoes are huge and wide goth platforms are huge and take up space and also make uh, people much taller um, just think about like all of these things extra high heels like dancer heels are really really high and the platform is really really big and wide for stability and all these other things like think about how that allows people to be perceived and what confidence that might give people or what it would allow people how it allows people to navigate through spaces based on the space that they're taking up right um, like goth trip pants take up so much space they're so wide they're so baggy why would a goth person need to take up a lot of space right a lot of goth person want pants that take up a lot of space. And skateboarders. And black people. What do all these groups have in common that would make it valuable for them to be able to take up space? And like, obviously there are historical reasons, aesthetic reasons for why, you know? But think about the implications of wearing big wide pants, I think. It's really cool to think about. I think space is so much more important than just being like designer brand or colorful or neutral you know what's in for the season what colors are popping to, is it neutrals or is it neons it's like is that is any of that important to you the things that they make important or the things that they make trend what about what space you're taking up you know so space another one is sound okay i love thinking about sound when it comes to developing personal style i was thinking about there's nothing no, nothing came out hold on i love thinking about sound when it comes to personal style because it makes me think of um, how all these really marginalized groups are seen really negative in relationship with sound uh, it, as it relates to fashion, like bangles and jewelry. I think of like Asian women and black women in America. That's like, and Latin women as well. Like when I was growing up, those were who would have like jewelry and bangles that would make noise. Jing, 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 jing. Like as you grabbed your paper and all the teachers that I would go to school with would have such a problem with the fact that kids had bangles and their jewelry would make noise but that's beautiful like that's such a beautiful thing to consider how much noise do you want to make when you're taking up space in um, a place in the room as a fashionable person what sounds do you want to make do you want to move through the room silently do you want to have the la latex squeaky sound squeaky squeak squeak do you like that do you like wearing a hard boot that claps when you walk and like smacks the floor or do you want um, a boot with a rubber sole that kind of absorbs the sound as you take a step and sounds really normal do you want loud click clock heels like the devil wears Prada mentions like what sounds do you hope to make and also again considering how does that affect your the way that you're perceived and interpreted in fashion as a fashionable person or in the world as a fashionable person as a person in general you know 
what do you care about your sound? What do you think about your sound? As I mentioned in the, the spatial wrapping article, I believe, and I can link some other articles. If you guys ever want to see what I'm reading, I have a blogspot, thatadult.blogspot. I link directly to the articles that I'm reading. So just go there. I've linked everything I've read for the last like year. But they talk about how these black kids, like I said, would wear larger shoes so that it would make a louder no noise when they're going through the hallway. Because it's too big for their foot so it's falling off their foot as they lift their foot up to take a step and smacking up against their heel when they're hitting it and then it hits the ground so it's like a double sound noise and they get the two for one sound like experience that is such genius little black kids are thinking of this teenage black kids young black adults older black adults thinking about sound what kind of shoes are you wearing what kind of um tip and toe is on the shoes what kind of sole is on the shoes does it make a lot of noise when you wear your gator shoes like black people think about things like this when it comes to fashion identity in relationship with racial power dynamics and being excluded and wanting to be people wanting to silence people and erase black people people do a lot to take up space and make noise and you know be bold and I think that that's really an incredible thing to think about a lot of people in alternative subcultures do the same Think about how punks in like the 70s the 80s would wear bright flashy like crazy colored like eyeliner and eyeshadow and like um hot pink like fishnets and stuff like that and like lingerie and show a ton of skin because they're like bam like I'm here you want to X me out and I'm here and um it's something you can also do with sound not only does it have like beautiful rooting and grounding in people's personal cultures, but um, it kind of allows you, if that's what you want to do, it's like, it allows you to take up space in another way and uh, create presence, you know? Like not everything has to be go out and buy and change and recreate. It can be you thinking in a different way. Like if you're always thinking in the same way, you're the one that needs to change, not what you buy, not your clothes. Okay, the next part is dimension and negative space. Dimension and negative space is something that I actually brought up a little bit when I was talking about taking up space. But um, with Rick Owens, this is what I was saying about how he creates garments that honor the, the shape of the body rather than propping it up and reconstructing the shape of the body. Um, Issey Miyake's Please Please garments work really well for layering and as pieces independent uh, and pieces used across different seasons. I think in large part because of the emphasis on the space between the body and the garment. Margiela has a really consistent theme of creating a waist, um, but he doesn't create a waist necessarily conventionally. Like sometimes he'll just tie a rope around the like waist and it like cinches the, the model in. Other times he'll pack fabric on top of the hips to create that space. So then there's just like a large space between the top layer of fabric and the skirt underneath. So it makes it look like the model's body does this without doing like corsetry. And I think that that's a really interesting form of um, using, utilizing um, space and dimension and um, shape across different axes. Philosophy, okay, I talk about philosophy and I do have a series about why I wear different designers. I'm still working on Issey Miyake's video. It's taken me quite a while, but I do talk about philosophy quite a bit, I think. Um, but just to go into it superficially again, uh, attaching to larger philosophies and sensibilities from designers rather than the aesthetic appearance of it can mean for example, with Margiela, thinking creatively and making use of things that you already own and repurposing them in a creative way, it doesn't mean that now because Margiela does that, you take a sweater and you tie it around your shirt and make it a different shape. Even It doesn't even have to mean that. It can just mean like knowing that and like subtly wearing your shirt inside out. Like it doesn't have to be so literal or so gimmicky that you see a designer wear tie sweaters around the model's feet at a runway show and you're like, that's the philosophy. I have to tie sweaters around my feet. The point isn't tie sweaters around your feet. The point is think in a different way. Make use of something in a different way. Do something slightly different than is being done. Um, so it's like these broader ways of thinking. You know, you could tie the sweater, your shirt around your top as like a 
accessory and that does count as well like I'm not saying don't think in certain ways do think in others I'm just saying it doesn't always have to be so literal as like copying what you see on the runway because that isn't the philosophy that is the aesthetic the philosophy is why they do that and a lot of people ask me how do you find out a designer's philosophy like books from their fashion house where they explain their philosophies principles and things like that but you can generally go on a designer's website and go to their about section or look at some of their products and they'll have descriptions and try to find information what what is this fashion house based on what are their beliefs what are their principles What's the point of this fashion house? What do they think? Why were they founded? When you start researching those things, those are things you can implement in your personal style that aren't as literal as in 2005, they did bleach denim, so I'm going to start wearing bleach denim. It's going to be like in 2005, they did bleach denim because they felt devoid of emotion because of the chaos in the world and they needed some semblance of peace and silence in one place in their lives. So you look for peace and silence in one place in your life and that could be wearing a dingy gray sweater that your mom gave you when you were growing up because it reminds you of the time when you were growing up when you felt peace and silence and you didn't have all these bills as an adult etc. Et it means that you're attaching to the brand in a much more deep way which for me it builds like longer brand longevity with a, a person because if you're just like oh well I love what they did this season so you buy it that's not the same thing as I love what they do in general or what it, the season meant and how that connects to me and how I can connect with it you're gonna have like stronger memory and stronger brand attachment from like those kinds of practices in my experience and through my research that's what I found so yeah philosophy I kind of talk about a lot so I don't want to bore anybody but that's what I mean by philosophy reconstruction is going to be one of the last ones so reconstruction I find that reconstruction is another way of rethinking getting dressed. Um, a lot of people come to me when I'm on live with a lot of um, pain and um, a lot of really difficult experiences, uh, uncertainties, um, confusion, and I have told my story I think enough times before, but part of how I started working to find my personal style was I had a really hard experience and I was like reconstructing my identity and I think that that's what fashion can be and I think people think reconstructing means like rebuilding your wardrobe you have to go out and buy a ton of stuff but that isn't you reconstructing that's the brands getting sales I think reconstruction is who are you now and what do you want to say as you now and how do you want to say it and why do you want to say it that form of reconstruction does not require shopping it doesn't require even wearing your clothes in a different way it could be you wearing your clothes in the same exact way but having a different attachment to them and a different meaning for it personally inside of you so I think reconstruction and not feeling defeated by your experiences and instead um, going into your wardrobe and using it as a place um, to feel like some degree of control and um, strength rather than uh, anxiety and fear I, I think that it can be really useful um, and I, I think that your your wardrobe is certainly and always that you fashion in your wardrobe your hair or lack thereof your piercings or lack thereof your tattoos and lack thereof um, how you construct an identity to the outer world can be a place of reconstruction that doesn't involve destroying your current or past self there has to be some inner work and I think the inner work is like 99% of the fashion and 1% of the fashion is putting on the clothes because if you don't have a reason to be wearing the clothes, if you don't know why you're wearing the clothes, if you don't understand why you're wearing the clothes or what drew you to the clothes or what it means when you wear the clothes, you wear them in a very different way than somebody who has those understandings. Like notice how this is all free. I'm tricking you. I'm like, don't shop. It's all free. You're like, why am I wearing this? Why am I wearing this? Takes kind of a long time to figure out. Learning about brands, identities, takes a long time to figure out. Doing research on a fashion brand, if you're actually doing the research, not just listening to a video essay, it takes a long time to figure out. I'm like, yeah. Take a long time. Take a long time. Why do you need to know seven million, but billion, zillion brands when you can just get to know brands slowly based on what you like? That's what I was trying to say in my other video. I don't really ever know if it comes across if people understand. The fashion is here. This is your heart. The fashion is here. You bring the clothes to your heart. The fashion is not in the world when the people are making it. The fashion is you. What do you like and why? Who are you? That's where the fashion is. The fashion is not. I feel I sound crazy because like having this thing on makes me feel like I'm just professor baby doctor baby speaking I'm not trying to be doctor baby speaking my hair is just messed up but you know what I mean like you're the one who's style like you it's your personal style just like it's your personal taste in anything you don't just buy whatever clothing stores are selling because they're selling it it's not about them it's about you like the centralizing aspect of all of this is reconstructing your understanding of beauty and reconstructing your understanding of taste because a lot of 
building personal style is understanding yourself and understanding what makes you you and understanding that that's the most important part and that's why you like someone's personal style. I said this in a video and I'm just gonna say it again. I said this and Ryan Yip said this and all of the most intelligent fashion people that I know feel this way that like, the more you work to learn about fashion, the less judgmental you are of other people because you get that it's that, it's that person's handwriting. Center it on yourself. And if you're like, well, I don't know what I like. Okay, that's okay too. You're not in trouble. Like, literally just figure it out. Take your time. Um, you're not in trouble. I hope that made sense. <sighs> if you guys know where I can get hair, send a prayer. I'm gonna start knitting again so I can make myself a bonnet like Mina had. Prayers up, I love you. Should I get a water filter? Comment yes or no, should I get a water filter and should I switch to a different water bottle? Thank you guys, I love making these videos and talking about fashion. Thank you to everybody who's met me in person. Thank you to everybody who's subscribed to my channel. Thank you to, actually, never mind. CoStar told me to stop doing it.